Welcome back troglodytes to the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have a beautiful 1987 Gibson Les Paul Custom in a slightly aged alpine white finish. Now a white Les Paul Custom, the first thing that will come to many people's heads is the Randy Rhodes Custom. Now there's a little bit of controversy out there of what year his guitar was, but 74 is generally considered the correct year. However, if you didn't know, 74 was the 20th anniversary of the Les Paul Custom, so many of the 1974 Gibson Customs actually had a special inlay at the 12th fret here that read 20th Anniversary. Now, Randy's did not have that inlay, but if it did, it sure would be a lot easier to know the exact date of his guitar. Now this one is not even close, it's a 1987, but it's definitely got that Randy vibe. It hasn't aged too much, but it still has that really nice creamy color. Honestly, these bright lights are kind of making it look a little bit more white than it really is. So 1987, this is kind of the last year that a lot of people will consider the Norlin era. Most forums consider the Norlin era to be 1969 through 1987, while yes, the current owners of Gibson bought it around, I think it was late 85, early 86, but things didn't really change a lot in the first year or two. It took a while. They did a lot of really freaky stuff before finally striking gold with the classic series. So is this Les Paul Custom a Norlin era custom? No, not really. This is like the very first modern day Gibson Custom. I would classify this guitar as more like a 90s custom. They have a similar headstock layout. They've been returned to traditional specs. Now, weight relief started in 1983, but this is actually a really nice and light example. It's a little over nine pounds, and it feels pretty good in your hands. Now, the pickups in these can vary. I believe these are a very late set of Tim Shaw PAFs. They were just kind of using up some of their old stock. But for 1988 models, Bill Lawrence designed a new pickup for Gibson called The Originals. It's the HBL-HBR series, and they're basically circuit board pickups. It's really easy to tell if your guitar has them, because your height adjustment screws are actually larger on those. Now, had this guitar been made about a month later, it would have had those pickups. But you kind of made the cutoff for some very late Tim Shaw's. So this guitar has your standard two-piece maple top, mahogany back, and mahogany neck. So a late 80s Les Paul Custom. Would I suggest checking one out? Definitely. I always find there's just something cool to saying I own an 80s Les Paul. It just sounds cool. So let's go ahead and hear how this one sounds. And shout out to Patrick, who's my new Patreon supporter. Uh, he asked that I play a little bit of Randy Rhodes, Jackson E. Lee, or some Zach Wild riffs on this white Les Paul custom. So I'll see what I can do. Thank <laughs> you. 
This guitar weighs 9 pounds, 3.7 ounces, and it features a 60s medium profile neck. Alright, so let's take a look at the condition of this guitar. This thing isn't mint condition, it's been well played, but I think most people would be okay with its shape. So the face of the headstock here, you can see you have all kinds of scratches from string changes. I do want to make mention on the high E string, it looks like somebody had a long string that really scratched this up a little bit. However, besides these scratches, you don't have any like major chunks or dings to really note. Just your light average wear and tear to the headstock. The truss rod turns just fine and you've got a nice straight neck on this one. The original nut is still present and your ebony fretboard is looking good. Now the frets do show some wear. You have some minor flattening. And that's mainly present on like the treble side of the frets, as it usually is. But definitely nothing you have to worry about for a while. A level recrown job would definitely do them wonders, but definitely not needed right away. Now the face of this guitar looks really good from far away, and you really don't see a lot until you get really close up on this guitar and you get it in the light just right. This is when you see all kinds of light nicks and dings, picking scratches, impression marks. There's quite a bit on this guitar, really, especially in this area where your arm's resting. You got all these light nicks and dings. But overall, you have a nice creamy color to this guitar. It's not overly yellowed. It still appears kind of white, but it's not, you know, so pristine white that you don't have the Randy vibe anymore. So this is like that perfect in-between color. Now the speed knobs here, you can see there's a little bit of sticky residue on them. I'm guessing there were stickers on it at one point in time. I tried to clean them the best I could. But you got some light nicks and dings in this area as well. So again, you have your original humbuckers in here. They have their patent number on the back. Uh, the neck actually reads a little bit hotter than the bridge by like a 0.2 but you still have your original Nashville style bridge and tailpiece. And the only thing that I believe has been changed on this guitar is the pick guard and the switch tip. Most switch tips on white customs are white, but it's a common modification to put a black one on it. Now, the only reason why I can tell this pick guard has been replaced is because if you look right here, there's a white circle around there. That wouldn't be on a Gibson one. And if I remember correctly, under here there might be a sticker that says it's aftermarket. But besides that, the guitar is stock. The back of the headstock, your serial number is 83067529, made in USA. You do have some scuffs through the finish at the top of the headstock right there. You also have a little bit of wear along the edges of the wings. But besides that, you just kind of have your normal wear and tear here. Now at first I thought this blemish was a finish check, but now that I've run my nail over it, it's very apparent that's just a scratch. This, this guitar must have hit against a cymbal or something and it just scratched it just right. It's not a crack, you don't have anything to worry about on this guitar. No breaks, cracks, or repairs to the neck, but definitely some edge wear. Now I would consider this neck kind of a medium 60s profile. It's not quite a 59 yet, but it's not quite a medium profile either. It's just kind of that almost there thing. Now you can see in this area the clear coat has been worn off the neck, and that's why this appears more stark white. Because it's not the actual finish that ages, it's just the clear coat over top the finish that ages. You kind of have some evidence of that on the back as well, especially in this area. Now the back does have the same wear as the front. You've got some buckle impressions and dings. Just overall a well-loved guitar. Not necessarily abused by any means though. Just lots of light nicks and dings all over it and some buckle worming. So if you're looking for a new guitar to be your gigging friend, you definitely don't have to be scared to play this one out. It's already got all that beginning wear on it. But my favorite thing is most of this wear is invisible until you get it into the light. 
The sides of the guitar are in a similar condition. You just have some light impression lines. There's a small ding right there. And this one still retains its original strap buttons, which is kind of miraculous. Usually those are the first things to go. And right here is the largest impression on the side of the guitar. This is the side that you'll see, so it's a little bit of an eyesore, but it is there. Now we'll do a black light test of this guitar. Everything glows the way it should on the front. We don't really have any missing finish or clear coat. But here's where you can also see where the pick guard's definitely a modern one, because the stark whiteness will glow differently. The face of the headstock is also glowing the way I would expect it to. Back of the headstock also glowing, but again you have that edge wear at the top as well as on the edges of the wings. And here's where you can see that little scratch here is not an actual break into the guitar. It is brake crack and repair free. And here you can see what I was talking about a little bit more clearly where the clear coat has been slightly worn off but the feel really is just about the same. If you, if you were to close your eyes, having never felt this guitar or played it, I don't think you would notice any difference between the feel in the two areas. Back of the guitar has that similar area right there and a little bit right there as well. But overall, there are no finished touch-ups or repairs to this guitar. And if you're wondering why these knobs aren't glowing, for some reason, around 1985-ish, they must have switched their suppliers of their knobs or just changed what material they were made of because the knobs just don't age after like 85. Like an early 80s speed knob or 70s speed knobs, they always turn yellow, but most of the ones from like mid 80s and on, they just don't seem to age. That's very interesting. This guitar comes in an Era Correct Generation 3 Gibson Chainsaw case. These are great cases, but if you're storing a large collection, I find they're a little bit bulky. But you know, if you only have like two or three guitars, or you just need a case to store a guitar in for like shipping, these are great for that. Now this case is in pretty good shape. It has all the metal latches yet. I mean, you've got a little bit of scuffing and some dirtiness to it. And I do want to make mention that this second latch is really tricky. I mean, it still works, it's just very stiff. So once you get that puppy latched, it's really difficult to get it back undone. You really do have to use two hands to get this thing. So it works, but it needs some oiling or something. It's probably close to breaking, but as of right now, it's still there. Now the inside is a nice beautiful blue interior. It really does complement the finish of this guitar. You have some light staining to it, mainly in like the bottom of the headstock area right here, where the dirty tuners have been rubbing against it. But besides that, this case is actually in pretty good shape. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this 1987 Gibson Les Paul Custom, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page. Facebook.com slash Troglys, T-R-O-G-L-Y-S. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in today, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.